you can see, we are loaded up, hooked up. Check out what we have on our Jeep. We got our cage on, like we said, we were uh, taking all the toys with us. We're about ready to do our test brakes, lights, make sure everything's running. We are heading into Minnesota. Freedom Rock in Maryville, Missouri. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you though, while you're listening to me and looking at this rock, you may also hear Dave talking to somebody at recreation.gov. We're trying to get a reservation for a campground tonight so that we know what we're doing. All right, I'm gonna flip this. Here is the Freedom Rock in Maryville, Missouri. And we just, Dave found this on his phone. We really don't know anything about it other than we do know that the guy who does these Freedom Rocks has a Freedom Rock at every county in Iowa. And he has tried to get every state in America to get two Freedom Rocks. Isn't that pretty? We enjoy the Freedom Rocks. We've actually, we thought about doing the Freedom Rock tour up in Iowa heading up to South Dakota, but we think we want to bust on up there and get us a site. All right, isn't that pretty? All right, what you guys are seeing right here, we just completed our first recreational.gov reservation. I had to go, we've been trying to call. We didn't know where we were going to end up. Getting somebody on the phone took forever. So I remembered that I grabbed the laptop at the last second. I used my phone as a hotspot. All of you that are genius technology people are probably thinking that we're stupid. This is the first time that we've done it. And whoop, whoop, Dave, how do you feel? We got camping figured out for two nights. Whoop, all right, we're heading on. We found an interesting little stop here on our road. Head north, we're in Nottaway Valley Historical Museum. There's a Freedom Rock down there. We're now on the Iowa Freedom Rock tour. And we pulled in and we found this information about the uh, orphan train from 1854 to 1929. Orphan and impoverished children were transported from the overcrowded Eastern cities to the Midwestern farmlands. They came over Clorinda, that's the town we're in, and dozen of other Iowa towns shared dramatically in these remarkable events, which became known as the orphan trains. 10,000 children found homes in Iowa before the depression. Okay, and then they just have some information about some of the orphans that and how they settled. And we just pulled in and a lady pulled in behind us. She works here, but they're not open today, but she gave us all kinds of information. They have several old buildings that they have kept the train depot a gas station we brought them in from other towns the bridge come from somewhere but you couldn't remember where yep uh we wanted to show you this building right here this schoolhouse from 1873 was founded by jesse Schmet hang on let me get this name right because this was also the home of 4-H. Jesse Theo Schombaugh. <laughs> That's right, Schombaugh. This is where 4-H started. They have so much here. And uh, we were talking, let's see what this is about. In the memory of the mother of the 4-H. Everywhere in the country, for those who have learned to see and understand our lessons, which point toward the richness and strength of life. Well, I like that. Here's the... On both sides. Jesse Shaw... Jesse Shambaugh. Jesse Shambaugh. Yep. 
invented 4-H right there. All right, we're gonna go on down and check out this uh, Freedom Rock. And as you can tell, like probably the Maryville, Missouri Rock, probably we sounded tense and wow, we weren't sure because at that point we were trying to get a hold of someone to reserve a spot for camping tonight. <clears throat> so we were just a little bit apprehensive about that. So now we've got that all figured out. You saw the little video. I was able to use my phone as a hotspot, use the laptop. We reserved our spot. So now we can take our time and enjoy our day. We are not, I've told y'all before, we're not technology people. That kind of stuff worries us. <coughs> but going on recreation.gov and getting those two uh, nights was very easy to do. So now I'm just grateful that we have somewhere to sleep tonight. We know where we're going to go. We can take our time. And here is not a way, no, Page Banner County of Iowa. Duty, honor. Uh, the lady that was just here, she said that Ray Bubba Sorensen, she was here when he did this, said that he took about a week to do this rock. America means freedom and there's no expression of freedom quite so sincere as music. Uh, Glenn Miller is from here. She said he's got a home site and a memorial up the road. We are just so impressed with uh, all these freedom rocks. And like I said before, you're always usually some flags. This little historical museum has a lot. Like there's a house and there's a museum building back there in addition to right here, but they're closed on Mondays. So I think we are just gonna move on down the road. What do you think, Banny? Move on down the road. Move it on down the road. We found a perfect little park to have lunch. And it just so happens that there's a Freedom Rock here. We're in Pottawatomie County in Oakland, Iowa. We love this idea. We love just kind of having something to look at. It's given us an opportunity to stop driving, rest our legs and let the dog out. This little plaque, this little information board has so much information. It says that Ray Bubba Sorensen got the idea of this rock tour by watching Saving Private Ryan. And he started painting the Freedom Rock in 1999. There were six ladies that were part of the Oakland Friday Coffee Ladies Club. And they went to the mayor and they tried to convince him and the council that the rock be here. They went and picked out a rock, and then when they got digging it up, it was so big they had to build a special trailer to get it here. It took him 10 days. Uh, let's go over and look at it. Flag on the top. There's an eagle, and there's a painting of four of the important people that lived here in this county. One of them was John McCain, wasn't it, Dave? Yep. Oh, look, they put four. a coffee cup for the six... So you got to read that kind of stuff to know what this little information's about. John McCain was a four-star general Navy. A flag on the rock. Uh, they said they had to have a big rock because this is the second largest county in Iowa. Oh, and an eagle. Come on, bandit. Uh, they said the town came out, lined the streets the day that the rock was delivered. Here are the Four people, Frank Everest, Brent Maher, John McCain. Right there. Here. 
I told David no more Freedom Rocks. We had to go. So here we are at Shelby County Freedom Rock. Got Combine right here. So here we are. For y'all that don't know, Dave's Dave's a Combine expert, fixing and using. Freedom is not free. This is a really pretty rock. Shelby County. Iowa, good job, Iowa. Every county having one of these Freedom Rocks. Aw. Check your state. Uh, he was going to do, what was it called, Dave? A 50, 50 state Freedom Rock tour? Something like that? Yeah, I've seen that on Google and stuff. Erling, Iowa. Every state varies. Oh, they have a little lush place. Yeah. We've been to a bunch of them over on the east side. Yep. All oh, the flag side. Volunteer side. Volunteer side. The military side. Church and the, and the church side. Oh, oh, this is a good stop. And then Armed forces. donations are welcome. Yeah. All right, there's our rig. We got to get to South Dakota, and we're still in Iowa. Pretty. I guess y'all can see who makes the decisions around here. Since I said two rocks ago, we were done with the rocks, but this one is beautiful. Like, I'm, we were coming anyway. We were going to mark it off, and I was like, okay, we're not videoing every rock. But this rock is awesome. Mom, Mama Nona County. It's near the Los Hills. Yep. Archie Steen. And Nathaniel Fender. And the thing about this rock, in addition to this rock, they also have a Veterans Memorial Museum. They have a tank. They have statues. They have equipment. And they have this big airplane on display. Okay. Anything else you want to say about this one, Dave? Nope. It's surprising to see the military equipment here. Okay. How about you tell us, is there any more rocks between here and South Dakota? Oh, yeah. There's some in Nebraska and South Dakota, but I haven't looked for them yet. Okay. But are we going to hightail it to South Dakota now? Yes. All right, y'all heard him. We're heading to South Dakota. Little when the sun goes down We could walk this autumn town Find a place to be alone well, we have made it to our destination. Check, check, hang on. Dave, what are you doing? We are, can you want to tell everybody where we are? We're in Yankton, Yankton, South Dakota. We're actually on the south side. We're in Nebraska side of Yankton. Oh, we're in Nebraska. But we drove through South Dakota to get here, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, here's the site. Here we are. We've got a tire issue already. Tire went flat. We are sitting amongst people that really know what they're doing. <laughs> it has been a long time since we've camped in a campground like this, but we got half off electricity for two nights and we wanted to make sure and charge and power everything up before we went into minnesota national forest land we're having simple supper of hamburgers and corn we're probably going to get the kayak later we'll carry till we're gray and old so hold on to all we know we Moments that we've shared. Hold on, 
if all we have is just each other, everything will be fine. Just hold on. Bike repair, no problem. Just hold on. We are so country bumpkins in this campground. <laughs> we truly are. People who really know how to camp are here. And here we are. I'm the only person in this campground cooking over an open fire. But it is beautiful. Moments that we shed. Hold on if all we have is just each other. Everything will be fine. Just hold on. Just hold on. We're up. We decided every morning that we're out, we're going to start the day with taking the dog for a walk. Our campground is right over here. We did the whole loop over there, but then we came over here so I could take him off of his leash. Man, there are a lot of fish out here. I don't know if you can see all of them. I'm going to tell those boys to go down here. Uh, we're going to get up and eat breakfast. And then I think we're going to head over to the Lewis and Clark Visitor Center. It's right there. We still haven't made it to the Visitor Center, but wait until you see this. Dave, what lake is this? This is Lewis and Clark Lake. It's 31,400 acres. It's uh, 90 miles long and like three to four miles wide. And as you can see, it is windy. It is beautiful over there. This lake is like where we were last night with the dam. Yeah, this is Point Dam. This is on top of it. Is this that is high? above stream, upstream. Above. Yeah. Before the Missouri River turns up and goes up to the middle of South Dakota. It's been raining. And you can see that it's windy. A bunch of little buses all over the place. Little summer school kids trying to have fun and it's windy and it's raining on their parade. But there's some blue sky coming. All right, now we're heading over to the visitor center. Dakota, they North Dakota. Change of plans. We forgot our stamp book, so we gotta go back to campground. So we're gonna do a campground tour now. And there's the state line. You go from South Dakota into Nebraska. Here is Yachton Lake. Is that what this is over here? Yep, Yachton Lake. Yachton Lake. That's where the Missouri River used to be before they built Gavin Point Dam. Yeah. All right, we'll show you uh, the entrance to the campground is just up here. Here we are, Cottonwood Campground entrance. There's a booth, but no one really mans it. And it does say that this is a Corps of Engineer. All payments have to be done through rec recreation.gov. You can drive in and if there's any spots, you have to get online and reserve it. And then usually yesterday, there's a little golf cart sitting there that said, check in here. You can tell why they call this Cottonwood Campground. Or Cottonwood trees. Some of these are over 100 years old. These trees might have been young when Lewis and Clark came through here. More than tell you the really good spots, because almost all of these spots are nice and shaded. We're just going to call out the ones that you do not want to get that spot. But like you can see, this is a Tuesday and there are a lot of open spots in here.
42, that's empty. Forty-six is over here to the left. Okay, now this one right here, number forty-seven, it's going to be in mostly sun all day. Get a little shade from that elm tree. Yep. And the interior loop right here, don't be afraid to take that because the only thing that's really in there is the shower house. Okay, so forty-nine right here, it's going to be right out in the sun. Might have some foot traffic cut across the grass, but most people stay on the asphalt path. 51, it's going to be out in the sun. 51. Need to find that map back. Now, these sites over here that have uh, the P on them, that means that it's a prime spot. Like this one right here says P53. Uh, you pay a dollar more, well, two dollars more. Dollar a day more, isn't it? Or two. Two. Two dollars a day more. Okay. Uh, normal prices. <gasps> Hang on, this lady is not even looking. Y'all just saw that, right? No. Holy crap! I am impressed. I didn't just cuss. Sweet Jesus. <sighs> All right, back to the payment. Normal price, $22 a night. We got it half off that because of Dave's senior pass. So we paid $22 a night for America, both nights. America beautiful pass. And there we are. I'm gonna turn this off for a second. He's gotta go get our book. All right, so the prime spots are right on the water, but the ones, the, all of these sites in here are beautiful, shaded. It was quiet last night here. We felt very much out of place. One thing you hear running is air conditioning. Yeah, but like we are redneck hillbillies amongst all these people that with these big rigs. That's the way we roll though. We needed electricity. We're getting ready to go up into the north woods of Minnesota. So we needed everything to be charged up. We drove so hard yesterday, we wanted to take an extra day. They have a playground and a shelter, shower houses. We got beach volleyball and beach volleyball. Else. Take you down here. Now we almost took P4, and we're glad. I'm glad I, we didn't do P4 because it is really. In our opinion, it's very close down here. But it looks like uh, a lot of these people down here have already left. P1 right here. P2 on the right. Hey, okay, you got water access for fishing if you bring your kayak. P4, that's the one that we might have taken. I'm really glad we didn't take that. They came in yesterday, had to. Yeah, because that was open yesterday morning. There's that scenic riverway map we'll talk about later, I guess, when we get our stamp. Hey, that site right there, P10, is right out in the sun. But then you come up here and it's right back into the shade. Now, the maintenance guys, they've been doing some sawing and trimming of some trees and stuff around you can hear chainsaws 14 over here to the left 16 to the left guy standing right in the middle of the road okay what he's doing right there he's trying to reserve a spot that's probably his car right there you have to reserve a spot before you take a spot yeah you gotta do it electronically or call the 877 number yeah and take it from us just do it electronically we tried calling yesterday it was on hold we was on hold for nine minutes before somebody answered the phone and then by the time we talked to someone <coughs> it was 25 minutes the home phone call was over 30 minutes long 
But the lady, and if we can do it online, y'all can do it online. Seriously. Like I have, we never do anything like that. Y'all know us. We, we camp out in the woods. That was the first time we have ever reserved a spot online. So if we can do it, y'all can do it. Anybody can do it. On your way out, here's the dump station. There are six, six? Looks like six of them. Six spots here, but there are three different campgrounds in this wreck area. There is the first one is a South Dakota Pearson, Pearson. Game and Fish. Yep. And then the middle one is Corps of Engineers. Cottonwood. And then the last one is Chief White Crane. It's a Nebraska state. Yeah, it's over there by the game. river. Uh, South Dakota and Nebraska both require a daily pass. Either you buy, pay it daily or you have a, your yearly pass to use their lands. Don't get me started on that. Because Missourians, we pay a tax so that everybody can come into our state parks and anywhere in Missouri for free. Uh, the con conservation areas. For free. Conservation areas, yep. And national forests. All right, now we really are going to the Visitor Center. The Lewis and Clark Visitor Center is operated by the Army Corps of Engineers. This Visitor Center includes exhibits and information on the Missouri River Basin. It's located on the Calumet Bluff just downstream from the Gavin's Point Dam in Nebraska. You can get your National Park stamp here for the National Missouri Riverway and the Lewis and Clark Trail. A mission is free. Hours of operation is seven days a week, nine to five. Beginning Labor Day, the Visitor Center will be open. It is closed on federal holidays. In addition to the Visitor Center, this area also has a overlook for the dam, a shelter for picnicking, and a playground. Came down from Lewis and Clark Visitor Center. We're down here below the dam on Nebraska side. We decided to throw in a really fast campground review just because it's not going to take very long. This is the Nebraska Headwaters. Tailwaters. Tailwaters. What 42. did I say? Nebraska Tailwaters Campground. Tailwaters Campground. It is Corps of Engineer. 42 sites. Here are 10 sites. There is the Missouri River. We got nine sites for 10. No, actually, okay. totally 11 because the two on the very end down there. There's campground host, one of them. Yeah, there's two different campground hosts here. Ball toilets. Boat ramp. Boat ramp. Fish cleaning station. The thing that we did like about this campground is that there's one single lane line of camp spots. Yep. So you have nobody behind you. Everybody's and 20 to 25 feet apart. Okay. Roughly. There's site three, four, long sites. Some of them are shadier than others. Water hydrant behind four. Here's your view of Missouri River. That's Chief White Crane on across the river. Okay, they do have a shower house and a running water Bathroom, it's right there. I'm thinking that must be a handicap spot. You have to reserve these through recreation.gov. This one also says you can drive in here and not have a reservation, but you have to reserve it before you, that's how you pay for it. Before you set up camp. They don't take money at the booth. I don't even think anybody even mans the booth anymore. Not since COVID. Okay, these in down here looks very shady. 29, 30, and 31. Then two on the end of the tent sites again on the very end. And then got two more down here. Two more primitive ones. If you're a temp camper, these would be nice down here. You'd be kind of by yourself. Right there, 33, 32. There's your view. If you want to be away from people, and you still probably buy your camper or truck camper or van camper right there. Yeah. Camp. We're looking, uh, we looked on the Clio app. 
Y'all see that? Yeah. I don't know. Leo app. All right. And we found this. Go ahead, Dave, read a little bit and tell us what this is. Thanks to Abraham Lincoln, Yankton became the first capital of the huge Dakota Territory formed in March of 1861 before Lincoln's presidency. The Dakota Assembly met in Yankton from 1862 to 1883 when the capital was moved to Bismarck. Two-story frame structure was raised in 1886, three years before South Dakota and North Dakota was established. All right, uh, we're going to go over there to that bridge next too, but we're going to come down here. Dave said he found a statue. Who's this statue of? A uh, steamboat captain who came up the Missouri River. It is very pretty here. This is the river. What is this called? The Riverfront Park? Yeah, Riverside Park. Riverside Park in Yankton, South Dakota. Captain Grants. Prince Marsh, steamboat captain, pilot, and riverman. He never flinched at the call of duty. Way to go, Captain. We're on this double-decker bridge. Meridian Highway Bridge located in the border between Nebraska and Yankton. Built in 1924, received an alternative ferry system to and pontoon to a railroad and travel bridge. It took them uh, three years to build it. 3,000 feet long. Yep, it's pretty neat. They had erosion issues in 2008, so they had to close the bridge, turned it into a footbridge, and built a new bridge over there. They call that the Discovery Bridge upstream. Yep. Bandit is enjoying his little trail. You can see this bridge has all the locks. Yep. All right, let's see what the view is. The railroad section was a uh, raise up for the steamboats to go underneath when steamboats went north all the way up toward Bismarck. Oh, and didn't you just figure out or read that uh, barge traffic stops at Sioux City? Yeah, the local barge traffic stops at Sioux City now. Right. Okay, I think we're gonna put a wrap on this video of Cottonwood Campground. Yesterday we had Freedom Rock Tour in Iowa. Yep. Today we've done Lewis and Clark Visitor Center. We found some local history here in Yankton. We added in an extra Nebraska Tillwater Campground Review. Yep. Mostly for us so that we can remember what that looks like. Yep. Anything else, Dave, you want to add? No, nothing I can think of. Just finding out more stuff about Lewis and Clark and the uh, uh, in the Missouri River that I didn't know about before. Uh, we did take a page out of our own book. We needed some electricity because we're heading up into the north woods of Minnesota. So we needed electricity. So we got in this Corps of Engineer campground. We had to do the uh, reservation through recreation.gov. And if we can do that, anybody can do that. Okay, there was a gentleman over at the visitor center trying and you know, he was using his phone. This has been a nice stop. It's pretty here. Lots to do here. Anything else, Dave? Nothing Again, this bridge is neat. Yep. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, America's beautiful. Get out and see it. Like, subscribe if you want to. We'll see you on the road.
Pelicans.